So it's lockdown day two and Adrian has joined me. Hi Adrian, how are things going? Yeah, good to be with you on day two, Jess. So far, so good. Good. So we did get the bad news that we got downgraded by Moody's last night. What can we expect now? You know, when we chatted yesterday, I said to you, you know, it was a 50-50 call. Uh, the 50 with us not being downgraded was the um, suggestion that Moody's might take into consideration that the environment had changed uh, so spectacularly and swiftly, and that might give us a benefit of doubt. Um, the other 50 was they wouldn't uh, give us the benefit of the doubt, and they didn't. Uh, so we were downgraded last night. Uh, the statement that Moody's released was very clear on what they were looking for and that they hadn't seen the necessary evidence. What it means uh, for you and me um, is that when uh, investors get a chance to respond when markets open, uh, they will begin by selling South African government bonds and uh, those uh, RAND sales will be converted to dollars. So you're going to get weaker government bonds as they're sold off, and you're going to get the RAND weakening as it's uh, sold off. To convert that into you know, your and my everyday language, uh, weak, weaker government bonds means higher interest rates, initially for government, and then for homeowners, vehicle owners, and uh, the cost of borrowing for businesses. So we can expect that this downgrade will translate into a higher cost of borrowing for all South Africans, starting from government and reaching through to, to households. And it's also going to uh, uh, translate uh, into RAND sales. Now, uh, given where the RAND is trading at the moment, it already looks extremely weak. And a lot of people have argued that the downgrade was in the price. We'll know that uh, in the fullness of time if the RAND weakens even further from here. If we take it at face value, uh, when the RAND sells, uh, we import 30% of our economy. And so one third of our economy is going to experience higher imported prices, i.e. inflation. It's not good news. So what do we need to do from here then to regain our investment grade status? Look, it's a tough, it's a tough uh, circumstance that we find ourselves in. And if you're going to recover, uh, you want to be recovering from uh, a stronger footing, a stronger position. And we're in a tough patch. So I think it would be grand or sweeping to say, well, we can recover from here easily. Uh, what's needed is uh, clear and uh, direct policy action to get the ratings agencies to change their minds. They want to see evidence. They want, don't want to see talk. And they want evidence on a range of things, including government spending, the size of government debt, uh, certainty on uh, property rights, i.e. the land issue, um, uh, clarity on uh, state-owned enterprises being put into onto a firm footing. So that's what they're asking for. And that's not uh, a result that will come about in the space of months or even quarters. I think South Africa's downgrade puts us into a situation where we're going to have to work uh, with determination. Uh, we're going to have to work collectively, public and private. And uh, it's not a case of, well, this time next year, we'll be back uh, in the land of milk and honey. I think we're here for a couple of years uh, in this sub-investment grade status. And we can find our way back if we do the right things. The, the if is if we do the right things. So it's our job now. It's not their call. It's our job. All right. And how is your lockdown going? How are things going in your area? Yeah, you know, look, if I step, uh, if I step outside uh, and look onto the streets and uh, uh, across, the, across the garden, uh, my community sort of has taken this seriously and is responding appropriately and behaving you know, according to uh, the requirements and, and the discipline, uh, the important discipline of, uh, of this lockdown. Unfortunately, I don't think that that's the circumstance for many South Africans, that many South Africans live in very close proximity, crowded circumstances, uh, and perhaps, uh, you know, it's, it's early days and it's too soon to know, but you know, we'll get the, uh, the evidence of this in the fullness of time uh, just to see how effective this lockdown has been, not just for you and me, but for South Africa broadly. 
uh, in all of this, there's, uh, there are some silver linings. Uh, and uh, an example would be that uh, yesterday, my wife, uh, Tashmia, she's the CEO of the Youth Employment Service, um, has found a fresh collaboration using the social distancing to work uh, in the technology arena to create uh, just more than 30 employment opportunities for, for young people. So it's a, it's a modest gain in a, in a very tough circumstance, but hopefully you know, over the next 19 days now, <laughs> uh, we'll find uh, more and more of this type of evidence emerging as we learn to deal with this new circumstance and different reality. And thank you for joining me today, and we'll chat again tomorrow. Look forward to it, Chase. Cheers. Speak to you then.